Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more than what the, uh, what the uh, introduction to this uh, talk uh, said. I want, to, I want to talk a little bit more about NYU and Poly and New York City and entrepreneurship and uh, some of my roles in all of that. This is the, uh, uh, I, I, on my way in, I, I stopped at the Starbucks uh, up the street. Uh, what, what NYU Poly building is that? Rogers in Rogers Hall. And I, and I wrote some notes down into Google Docs, which I now have on my phone. So if I keep referring to my phone, I'm not texting with my friends. I'm actually looking at the notes that I wrote about uh, what I want to talk about. So this is my, my first public appearance at Poly and the uh, first uh, public appearance at NYU since I joined the boards of both NYU and Poly. And you might ask, well, why, why would I do that? I have no affiliation with either school. I didn't go to either school. None of my family members went to any, either of these schools. Uh, I didn't even know Jerry or John or any of the board members of either school before I did this. So it's sort of a, a strange question. Why would you do that? And uh, so this, this talk is designed to answer that question in, in a fairly roundabout way. I thought I would start with who am I? I am uh, the son of an engineer. Uh, I was born uh, and raised to be an engineer and also trained to be an engineer. My father uh, is a uh, career member of the Army Corps of Engineers. He has a degree from West Point, two master's degrees in engineering, one from Columbia, one from MIT, and a PhD in fluid engineering from Lehigh, and was the uh, chairman of the Department of Mechanical Engineering at West Point for about 15 years. So when I got out of high school, I had two choices, uh, go to West Point or go to MIT. I chose MIT, and everything I know about engineering that I didn't learn from my dad, I learned at MIT. So I uh, come from a, a long line of, of Army officers and a long line of engineers, and uh, when I got out of MIT, I moved to New York. And I moved to New York because I was chasing a woman, now my wife, Joanne, uh, and she wanted to be in New York, so I came to New York, and as I looked around New York, I didn't find much in the way of engineering. I didn't even know about poly, um, and, and I didn't meet any engineers. And so I ended up uh, essentially following a career in finance, and what I do is I finance engineers, and uh, there are colleagues who are building companies around uh, engineering principles. And so that's, that's a little bit about who I am. And, and so I found myself in New York, and I've made a career in New York. Uh, and, and I moved to New York almost 30 years ago now. And it's become part of me. And the things that I really care about are my wife and kids, uh, New York City, and the cultural and, and uh, educational institutions uh, that exist in New York City. And then things like math, science, engineering, imagining the future, and making the future. Those are the things that uh, get me going. And I, I honestly believe that there is no better place in the world to imagine the future and make the future than right here in New York City. And, and that's a little bit surprising to many people because they think of Silicon Valley as the place that people imagine the future and make the future. And in fact, when I got into the venture capital business in the mid-80s, uh, I got into the venture capital business in 1986, the way that one would do the venture capital business in, in New York City is you'd meet with the other partners in your firm on Mondays, and then Monday afternoon, Monday evening, you'd go to the airport and you'd get on a plane and you'd go to either Boston or San Francisco. And you'd spend three days you know, running around those necks of the woods finding companies or working with companies that you were already invested in, and then maybe fly back Thursday night and spend Friday in the office. That was the venture capital business in uh, New York in the 1980s. And I did that for 10 years. And then in 1995, the internet came along. And it started to impact fairly quickly three of the biggest businesses here in New York, Madison Avenue, Wall Street, and uh, big media. And so there were entrepreneurs coming to New York and also entrepreneurs coming out of those industries trying to change those industries. And that was really the beginning, in my opinion, of the startup 
commuted in New York, 1995. The first decade, we had a lot of ups and downs, um, but came out bigger and stronger uh, by 2005 uh, than we started. And now we're well into the second decade. And the startup community in New York is become very vibrant. And if you look at just software-based businesses, web, tech, mobile, software, cloud, all that kind of stuff, New York City and the area right around New York City, the New York metro area, is the second largest startup community in the world after, after Silicon Valley. Bigger than Boston, bigger than anywhere else, um, and I think bigger than Beijing and bigger than Shanghai, although um, both of those uh, cities are also growing very, very rapidly in terms of uh, startups right now. But if you measure the venture capital business more broadly, and you include things like clean tech, biotech, material science, and some of the other important industries of the future, New York has basically nothing. Uh, and Boston and Silicon Valley have fairly vibrant startup ecosystems in those sectors. And so if you look at the total amount of venture capital and total amount of startups happening, New York comes in third or fourth more if you, if you take a broader view of venture capital and startups. So we have a one-legged stool in this city. We're a one-trick pony. We have the second most vibrant startup community in software-based businesses in the world, and we're nowhere in everything else. And that's not, in my opinion, a very healthy balance. Uh, and if you think about the future, you want to imagine the future and make the future, um, we think a little bit about what the future is going to be. So we know over this century that we're living in that the world is going to become more affluent. The developing world is going to develop. The world is more connected and will become more connected. The world will become warmer. People will live longer. The world will become more urban. These are all things that we know, or we know pretty well to be true. And so when you think about the technologies that are going to become the most important technologies over the next 100 years, the technologies we're going to use to imagine the future and make the future, they are biotechnology, sustainable energy technology, and urban sciences and information technology. Those are the things that will take us forward. And what we need to do as a city and as a startup community is we need to figure out how to create more sector diversity, more biotech startups, more sustainable energy startups, more urban sciences, urban engineering startups. And information technology weaves through all of these. So we have an overdeveloped muscle, information technology, software engineering, that can help us build these kinds of companies. But we can't do it alone. And so when I started thinking about, I've been doing venture capital now for 25 years, and I've been involved in the creation of some very interesting companies, and that has given me a perspective, but also has given me the wherewithal to actually do some things with, with, with uh, the capital that I've created. And, and I've always been inspired by the people in Silicon Valley, the entrepreneurs and the venture capitalists who have taken the, the, the capital that they have created, the personal capital they've created, and reinvested it in their economy. And so when I said, okay, I want to do that here in New York, where do I do that? You know, I looked around and I said, what are we missing here? And what we're missing here is we're missing enough young, talented engineers, scientists, technologists to help build these kinds of companies. We don't produce enough of them. And, and, we don't, and, and we do have a fair number of software engineers in the city, but if you think about some of these other areas like bioengineering and, and energy engineering and, and, uh, and urban engineering, we need more engineers who can do this. We need more young, talented, hungry people who can imagine and make things. And so I said to myself, I want to figure out how to make that change. And so I looked around the educational institutions in the city, and there are a number of them that could potentially be invested in, the way I like to think about things. Everything's an investment at some level. Um, and NYU Poly struck me as the most entrepreneurial institution, the largest institution. There are 30,000 
undergrads and grads, is that right, 30,000? 30, 30,000 undergrads and grads who go to, go to NYU. So it's much, much larger than any of the institutions you might think of. And, and when you're trying to change something, scale is important. And there's an engineering school here in Brooklyn, Poly, where we are today, right now, that 50 years ago was one of the great engineering schools in the world. And I believe with the right investment and the right connectivity can become, again, one of the great engineering schools in the world. And so that's why I was drawn to NYU and Poly. And the thing, a bunch of things excited me about NYU and Poly. One was that, they were, that they'd come together recently and that Poly was going to be able to take advantage of a lot of the things that NYU could bring to it, and NYU was going to be able to take advantage of a lot of things that Poly could bring to it. Also, the global networked university strategy. NYU has facilities in the Middle East and soon in Asia, and, and that seemed to me to be critical. Th this is a, we're living in a world that is truly global, and globalization is the mega trend of our lives, and NYU was the first major university to realize that and do something about that. And engineering and science and technology weaves its way through all of that. And also, Poly had picked uh, three areas to really make its bet on in the future, and those areas are information technology, bioengineering, and urban sciences. Three of the four areas that it struck me uh, thinking about you know, what are the most important technologies of the future. So that's what got me excited about getting involved with with NYU Poly, and, uh, and, and I, although this is my first appearance here at NYU Poly, it certainly won't be my last. My goal is to help move this institution forward by, being, by bringing energy and connections and capital to it, but also to create connectivity from these institutions into NYU broadly, into New York City broadly, and into the startup world where I work every day. And those connections are critical. If you start knowing who the people are that make things happen outside of Poly, but in the rest of NYU, or in the rest of New York City, or in the startup community in NYU, in New York City, it makes it easier for you as you're imagining something and wanting to turn that into a company to actually go do that. Startups require teams, it requires engineers, but it also requires designers. They require uh, product managers, finance people, executives, salespeople, marketing people. And if you think about NYU, you have a business school, you have a law school, you have a medical school, you have um, Tisch, you have ITP, you, so you have and, and, and many, many more programs there. And, and the students and faculty who are there are as passionate about imagining the future and making the future as the engineers here at Poly are. And I believe it's the cross-fertilization of ideas and people that lead to groundbreaking, game-changing ideas. And so I'm very excited about the possibilities uh, that are in front of Poly as an institution, NYU as an institution, but more importantly, New York City as a startup community and a place where entrepreneurs can come and build companies and change the world. And so that's why I'm here this evening. That's why I'm involved with NYU and Poly. And, uh, and hopefully uh, some of you in the audience are inspired enough by uh, you know, this idea of creating companies and changing the world that uh, that uh, you will uh, make that your life's work as, as I have uh, made it mine. Thank you very much.